All right, this is a talk about uh, what I call big toys. I was trying to figure out how to talk to young kids, younger kids, uh, about energy and oil. And uh, I came up with the idea that I could differentiate um, big toys and the need for long-term use of ethanol versus little toys and hydrogen because this is the this is the word that you'll see in the press and you'll see trials by General Motors of hydrogen cars and we'll all well hear that hydrogen is the solution to gasoline and um, and I I wanted to similarly say in the long run when we're really out of uh, all all oil that ethanol has the power to power the big toys so I wanted to these are these are two different categories uh, making the point that hydrogen does not have anywhere near the power uh, of ethanol and diesel fuel which powers trucks trains ships um, and then also planes uh, anything that has a lot of power to it so let's dive into let's dive into jet fuel first and what we'll do is we'll we'll start with our favorite 85 million barrel number and uh, we know that 15 percent of the of a barrel of oil goes into jet fuel there are 42 gallons a bear of gallons of gallons in a barrel and 15 percent of that is six gallons so you have six gallons uh, in a barrel gallons of jet fuel in a barrel and that comes to about 500 million gallons of jet fuel per day. Now, I've been looking on the internet to try to find the total number of passenger planes, and it looks like it bounces between 11,000 and 19,000. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say 15,000 jets. If you divide this 500 million by 15,000, you get 30 thousand gallons gallons of jet fuel per plane per day and then we have our trusty old four dollars a gallon which we'll always throw that out keeping it standard so you get hundred and twenty thousand dollars of jet fuel twenty five thousand dollars of jet fuel per plane per day. It means every plane that you see in the skies, on the tarmac, anywhere you see a plane, it's using an eighth of a million dollars a day. Every one of them. Eighth of a million dollars a day. The gas bills or the jet fuel bills to the airlines must be amazing. I, I, I think I'm gonna have to do a calculation on that, but an eighth of a million dollars per plane. Another interesting statistic, you take a 747, it has a carrying capacity of 60,000 gallons of jet fuel. Back to our $4, and $4 a gallon number. A 747 on a long flight, long international flight, San Francisco to London, which we love, they're fantastic, a quarter of a million dollars. Now, we don't, we, there's, there's the carrying capacity of the plane, so you can stick 500 people on here and with the right ticket prices, you can pay this bill. You, you have to be profitable so that airlines are able to put enough passengers with, enough, with high enough ticket prices to keep this going and be able to fly jets like this. But you just have to get an idea of the lifting power of hydrocarbons and look at what, what's happening in our world and how different the world will be when these liquid hydrocarbons disappear. Okay, that's jet fuel. These numbers just blow me away. I would not want to work at United Airlines and get that fuel bill every day. <laughs> I'd have a heart attack. Okay, now we're going to go over to our good friend Diesel. This is... I like Diesel. I, I like heavy equipment, like tractors, trucks. I, if I had to go work somewhere, it would be in, in the diesel trucking or diesel power industry. I, I worked at Caterpillar in their Mossville plant where they built the diesel engines and oh man I was I was quite happy in that in that job. 
Um, once again, diesel is using about 20% uh, of the 85 million barrels. So it's, it's comparable. It's comparable to the, to the jet fuel, 500 million, huge number. The thing you got to realize about diesel is that it powers the backbone of the of the the world's industry, their world's commerce, and this stuff is really important to shipping. For example, and let's take the QE2. Let's just let's just eye up this luxury liner, and that luxury liner is getting 29 feet to the gallon of diesel. So in our shipping business, we're not even measuring miles per gallon. We're measuring feet per gallon. This stuff, the massive size of shipping is, has got it down to feet. This is, this is, this is staggering to me. Now, when I talk about um, things like trucking, you have to have products. These trucks, these heavy-duty trucks carry 80,000 pounds. And these trucks have to be able to carry this this weight up a mountain. The the, the power in the di in diesel engines is so staggering. The reason that diesel has so so much power it, it has a it has a different horsepower uh, characteristics than um, than gasoline. It has it has really high torque at low RPM, which I'm saying a bunch of gibberish, but I'm saying this thing can really start heavy loads from a dead stop it it's amazing the way their engines work so from a dead stop you can you can get you can get heavy loads going in fact the d10 bulldozer the d10 bulldozer the biggest production bulldozer in the world has an engine that's rated at 800 bhp and i i went in there and i i i was 800 yeah bhp i went into the researching what the heck was the BHP and it stands for brake horsepower and I okay I never heard of that before and the engineers basically said to me is it's 800 we're not kidding horsepower <laughs> there's car horsepower that you, know, you you rev it up real high and you and you get a lot out of it at, at a certain RPM but this is like from a dead stop absolutely blade in the ground go it can push 800 it has a power of 800 horsepower this stuff is where how you can get huge power in a small space it's designed for heavy duty constant usage trucks running millions of miles a year and we we can't we cannot have anything run without this this is a guy that scares me the most this is why i i'm such i'm in love with ethanol because it's the only thing that has any power anything similar to diesel Nothing. No, those hydrogen guys have nothing similar to diesel. This is, this stuff is magical when you want huge, heavy-duty power. So, um, this is my jet and diesel discussion. Uh, I'll go into this. I'll talk about how much I love this engine. Uh, I love all engines, but I really like this one. Um, and and I, I just wanted to slow down our mechanical engineering lectures and take a little sidestep back into oil and talk about two other major major uh, sources of consumers of liquid hydrocarbons. That's it.